Hey guys and welcome back! This tutorial is going to be all about seating charts and how I created these using Canva. I'll be using my Cricut Maker to cut decals from my wood and acrylic pieces, but if you have a vinyl cutting machine, you can save your Canva design and print it out on a foam board through a company like Staples or Office Depot. And if you have a Cricut, you most likely already have experienced major lags and crashes when trying to design large projects within Cricut Design Space. So this is my little workaround to design elsewhere, then tricking my Cricut to cutting as an image. So there are lots of different softwares out there to help design a sign like this, but I have found Canva is just super user friendly and you don't have to download anything to your desktop. Now the basic subscription is free, although to download a transparent background to use on our Cricut, that does require the pro um, subscription, but I will go into that here in a little bit. So creating a new project is super easy. Just make sure you choose the inches before you input your dimensions. My seating charts, most of them are a 24 by 48 inches. And then I basically just start copying over the names from the seating chart, which I don't have a seating chart on hand at the moment. So I just have this list of celebrities. So let's just pretend that Robert De Niro and Edward Norton are going to be attending your wedding. All I do is start copying over each of the table name and each guest that are going to be sitting at that table. I just copy those over and get them onto my Canva. Once all my guest list names are in, I can start playing around with the fonts and the formatting of each of these tables. Um, so there are a few different fonts that I like to use for the name parts. And the guest names, I don't like to go crazy and use like a calligraphy font because it's going to be really hard for people to look through um, however many guests you're going to have. Like some of the seating charts have 150 names on them. That takes a little bit to kind of look through and find your name, um, even if it is in this nice, easy to read font. So just keep that in mind when you are selecting fonts. Most of them I do in the Paradiso or the Pacific Beach. Then I start playing around with the spacing of the lettering and the line height. I like to space out the letters and then bring the lines together. Um, that's just how I personally like it, but definitely play around with the different options. There are lots of different options and fonts available both on Canva and off. Um, most of the fonts that I have are through Creative Fabrica since I have a subscription with them. I will link um, my subscription link along with a coupon down below if you are interested in that. So now that I have the style of one of the table numbers, I can just copy the style to the rest and then start really positioning each table where I want it on the piece. Um, I like using the position center and also the vertical align functions um, so you can space evenly, vertically, and center it um, all through that position button. So I do that to both sides and just get the table numbers at least somewhat uniform or as much as you can. Sometimes it is hard because you might have seven guests at one table and nine at the other so just do the best that you can. So if I have the space for it, I like to add in my header and obviously this font to match the rest of your signage. So that's why it is important that you can upload your fonts to Cricut Design Space just so it all can match. Um, so whatever your welcome sign is, I like to use that same font as the header to this and make it like a find your seat or the couple's names or just something kind of fun that signifies that hey, like this is the seating chart, here is where you find your table assignment. 
So now that I am finished designing on Canva, I am going to download that as a PNG with a transparent background. Now this is the part that you will need the pro subscription for to save as a transparent background. But if you are just saving this to print on staples, then you do not need to do the transparent background part. I would then just save it as a PDF. So once I have uploaded this onto my Cricut Design Space, you can see that there is no background, there's no need to go through and click in between every letter to select any race. It is already ready, so just save that as a cut image and then it will appear on your canvas. So once it's on your canvas, you might have to make some adjustments here. What I do is um, add in a placeholder and make that the same size as my material, so the 24 by 48 inches, just so I can really gauge exactly how big I am going to be cutting these decals. So for this one, I just had to size it down just a little bit in order to fit on my piece. And then what I do is I'm going to take that placeholder and change it into the size of my Cricut mat. So my largest Cricut mat that I can cut on is an 11 and a half by 23 and a half. So I'm going to change it to those dimensions so I can get a better idea of what will make the most sense slicing this up into different decals to cut on my Cricut maker. Now I've determined how I want to slice this up, so I am going to duplicate that placeholder a few times just um, because once I slice this up, it slices through the placeholder as well, and instead of making a whole new one each time, I just have those extras to use. Um, so all I do is place that onto the placeholder and then I slice the sign, the names onto the placeholder. So I just select both of those and hit the slice button and then it slices off of the piece. Um, so then this will basically just allow me to cut it into sections uh, that will fit on my Cricut. So now that I have that all sliced up, I am ready to cut this. It already knows I'm cutting on the larger uh, mats because that's all it can cut on. Then you can see here on each mat, just kind of cruise through, make sure that all of your names are included, and sometimes I have one or two extras that I need to cut. That's totally fine, and they are easy to add in. So one thing that I do whenever I'm weeding is slice up the names like this. It's just easier for me to see each name that I'm working with just to ensure that I am not pulling up any letters by accident. So I am working on this gold vinyl here, but I am going to jump over to this white vinyl piece since I did forget to um, record the very first application of that decal. So I typically start from the top and then work my way down. I just wanna make sure that I put my decal close enough up to the top that I have enough space for you know the consecutive decals and especially once I get down to the bottom I don't want to run out of space so just make sure that 
want you put that first one far enough up to where you will have space on the rest of your sign. And then for the rest of the decals, I just start placing them almost like a puzzle, um, one by one, and using the same hinging method, just getting all of those on, and of course, in the correct order. So I can fit about 75 first and last names on the two by four foot charts or about 150 first name only. It's just going to depend on what formatting that your client wants. Maybe they don't wanna pay for two signs, so they are okay with going down to the one name. It's just really going to depend on your event or your client. Well, I hope that this video helped in your own wedding planning. Let me know any questions that you have down below in the comment section. And if this is for your own wedding, best wishes to you. Let us know what kind of projects that you're working on and what you need help with. See you soon.